Hello everyone, welcome to the first of our ACCA F8 lecture recaps. This is a recap of the full course lectures on our website, mapitaccountancy.com. And on that website, don't forget, you can download all of the mind maps you see here for free. So go there and check this out. But let's look at what we talked about in this lecture. This was our introduction to assurance engagements. Remember we talked about what is a quality assurance engagement? Well, it's all about offering that quality assurance. So it's where the practitioner examines the subject matter. Remember, that subject matter is prepared by another party who we called the responsible party. So if we're thinking about an audit of the financial statements, we're thinking about the other party being management. Management prepare the financial statements and the practitioner, the auditor, examines that subject matter. They examine them against the criteria that they've been prepared against, the standards, for example, to provide assurance to the intended user, i.e. to say to the intended user, look, we've had a look at these and they're fine. The intended user, remember, is the shareholder, and that will be in the form of an opinion. So the auditor gives an opinion on the financial statements. So that's what an assurance engagement is. It's not just audit. There are other types of assurance engagement that we look at shortly. The purpose of it, well, that's to increase the confidence of the user in using the information. So by the auditor looking at it and saying it's fine, we can say, well, actually, we can have confidence in using that information. It therefore reduces the risk of using that information. The parties involved in an assurance engagement, remember, you need to learn these. The parties are the user, the responsible party who actually prepares the financial statements, and the practitioner. It's the tripartite arrangement. Also, there's the engagement process which we need to be aware of. That's where we agree the terms in the form of the engagement letter, and we look at that in detail later on in the course. We look at the methodology that's going to be employed, the evidence that's going to be gathered, and the evaluation of that evidence. And lastly, in the engagement process, you need to set out the type of report that's going to be provided to the users. So that's the engagement process and what an assurance engagement is. We looked at illustration one to see how that's applied in the exam. So go back and have a look at that if you're not sure of any of that. On to the different types of assurance engagement then. Well, remember I said it's not just the audit. So examples are obviously the audit of the financial statements, but not just that. There's also review engagements. So where the auditor comes in and does a review of the financial statements. Again, we look at that in detail later. Maybe a risk assessment. So the auditor comes in and provides assurance over the risk assessment procedures. A systems report, also an assurance engagement over the systems, or perhaps of giving assurance over the social and environmental policies of the business. So let's look at the different types then. The first one we looked at was a reasonable assurance engagement. So the process here for a reasonable assurance engagement was that we gather evidence, remember that must be sufficient and appropriate, that the subject matter conforms in all material respects to the approved criteria. So that's what a reasonable assurance engagement is saying. We've looked at this and it conforms to the criteria that we need it to. The report that is provided is in the form of positive assurance, i.e. that the criteria have been met. So we're saying we've looked at it and it's met the criteria. So an example of this would be the annual audit. This gives a high level of assurance because we're saying we've looked at this information and it meets the criteria. On then to a limited assurance engagement. The process here again was to gather sufficient and appropriate evidence but that this was plausible. We're not gathering to say it's definitely right, we're saying the subject is plausible and the report is in the form of negative assurance. Remember that was, there's nothing to suggest that the criteria haven't been met. So this doesn't give us much assurance, it's a moderate level of assurance. An example of that would be the, a review engagement. Remember, none of these give absolute assurance, why is that? It's because there's a lack of precision. We don't test 100% of the transactions. We undertake the audit on a test basis and we don't do all of the transactions so we can't give absolute assurance. 
So those are the types of assurance engagement. Make sure you know them. I mentioned this review engagement as an example of a limited assurance engagement. So it is that limited assurance engagement. It's a review of the financial statements. It's not a full audit. You don't carry out all of the testing. So examples of this would be for a bank who wants to give finance to a business. They want you to look at the financial statements and say, yeah, they look okay to us. There's nothing to suggest that they're not correct. Or perhaps for a predator company, uh, that would be due diligence to make sure that a business they're going to buy is fine. Remember, the assurance in a limited assurance engagement is negative assurance. So nothing to suggest that the criteria haven't been met. So what we said was there's nothing to suggest the criteria haven't been met. And we looked at how that can be applied in the exam in illustration two. Why audit then was the next thing we talked about. There were three concepts that you need to be aware of for this exam. The first one was that incorporation means that management look after the shareholder resources and that's called stewardship. You need to know what stewardship is. It's a fiduciary relationship. We also need to know that managers and shareholders have that relationship. So management must be accountable to the shareholders. So that is the key here. Management have to be accountable to the shareholders. It also feeds into the agency uh, problem. This is where the principal, being the shareholders, employ the agents who are the managers to look after their interests. But that agent and acting for the principal leads to the agency problem. Because remember the uh, goals of shareholders and the goals of managers aren't necessarily the same. So those may clash and we need the auditor in there to give assurance to the shareholders to make sure that the accounts that are pre presented to them are correct. So that's the auditor role that we talked about. They report to the shareholders on the financial statements, basically to provide that quality assurance to them to say, yes, we've looked at these financial statements and they're okay. So that's why we're auditing. What is the actual audit that we carry out? Well, the objectives of it, first of all, are to provide that opinion. Remember, the opinion for the external auditor is on the financial statements, whether they provide what's called a true and fair view. So true, i.e. they're honest and fair, they reflect everything that they should reflect, the underlying accounting in the business. So we also have to make sure that they've been prepared in all material respects in accordance with whatever framework that they've been pre prepared with. So that's the objective of the audit, to say that the financial statements provide a true and fair view and are prepared in all material respects in accordance with the framework. The principles behind the audit are the ethical principles, which we'll look at later. Also, we need to make sure that we comply with all of the auditing standards, the ICES that we'll be looking at, and that we have to deal with professional skepticism. We have to make sure that we don't have the wool pulled over our eyes as auditors. So there are some pros and cons to auditing. The pros were that you get reliable information, you get an independent view from the auditor. It's also a deterrent to management to stop them undertaking fraud or acting with bias. And lastly, it provides credibility to those financial statements. So that's why we're auditing. On the downside, well, it is a little bit subjective. The ICES are open to a little bit of interpretation. The limitations that we talked about, not 100% of the balances are, or of the transactions are tested. It is on a sample basis. So we work on samples, we don't test everything. And lastly, management prepared the financial statements so we will have to rely to a certain extent on management. So we need to assess their integrity and whether we trust them or not. We then looked at illustration three to see how all of that is applied in the exam. So that was our first lecture on assurance engagements. If there wasn't anything or if there was anything there that you were unsure of or didn't understand, go back to it and make sure that you go over it. If you want this mind map, go to the website, you can download it for free there.